，台湾又称福尔摩沙。So the Buddha continued. This is Buddha talking. So both physically and mentally, one must avoid the bodies and the byproducts of other living beings by neither wearing them nor eating them. It's so clear. I read word by word. Yeah, it's not me. Yeah, I say that Buddha. Buddha said, "I say that such people have true liberation. Then, finally, they also have liberation if they don't eat meat. I guess if they don't eat meat and wearing animals or using animals' product, then they are at least liberate from the three lower incarnation. And then, because they continue to do that, they have no more bad karma, very little karma." Then, when any master come, they would be able to find him. The master will find such a pure and karmaless people to save them. Then, of course, finally they will be completely liberated. Yeah, sooner or later. So that's why the Buddha say that such people have true liberation. The Buddha said, "What I have said here is the Buddha's teaching. I mean, the saint's teaching, huh? not just him teaching, but him in the lineage of the saint, the Buddha's lineage, the saintly lineage. What I have said here is the Buddha teaching. Any explanation counter to it is the teaching of Papayan, I mean, the heretic or atheist, not true teaching. Further." Now Buddha explains something else, some other precepts. Okay, we had, you know, like uh, purity from lust, no more lust precept, and now a uh, killing precept we just done. And now Buddha continued to expound further about the uh, non-stealing. So Buddha said further, Ananda, if living beings in the six paths of any mundane world. Had no thoughts of stealing, they would not have to follow a continuous succession of births and deaths. As well, all these precepts are paramount, important, so that you can be liberated, at least from a lower birth uh, of existence. And then slowly, the master will take you up higher. So the Buddha said, "Your basic purpose." Meaning to Ananda and the monks at that time, your basic purpose in cultivating samadhi is to transcend the wearisome defilement. But if you do not renounce your thought of stealing, you will not be able to get out of the dust. Meaning this kind of dusty world, the earth. Yeah, even though one may have some wisdom. And manifestation of Chan Samadhi, I mean meditation Samadhi. One is certain to enter a devious path if one does not cease stealing. At best, one will be an apparition. On the average, one will become a phantom. At the lowest level, one will be a devious person who is possessed by a made ghost. So it's no good. All of them no good. <laughs> Even the highest, the middle, and the low, no good, no good. These devious hordes have their groups of disciples as well. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I thought only I have disciples. <laughs> I could, now a ghost, ghost even have disciples. Fancy that! I was so proud, and now I don't think I'm proud anymore. Huh? Even ghosts have disciples. <laughs> What a big deal about me! Huh? <laughs> Having disciples like that. <laughs> These devious hordes have also their groups of disciples. It says of himself that he has accomplished the unsurpassed way. You know, I mean, 
Buddhahood, enlightenment, complete enlightenment, that's what I mean, unsurpassed, nothing can compare to their way of accomplishment, that means they are on top already. After my extinction, the Buddha extinction, in the Dharma and in age, these phantoms and apparitions will abound, spreading like wildfire as they surreptitiously cheat others, calling themselves good, knowing advisors. They will each say that they have attained the superhuman abilities, enticing and deceiving the ignorant or frightening them out of their wits. They disrupt and lay waste to households wherever they go. Very destructive group of ghosts, of uh, apparitions. I teach the big shoes to beg for their food in an assigned place in order to help them renounce greed and accomplish the body way. The big shoes do not prepare their own food so that at the end of this life of transitory existence in the triple realm, they can show themselves to be one's returners who go and do not come back. In this case, the Buddha means triple realm, meaning this world and a little bit higher, huh? to the Brahma. So when you pass all this world to pass the Brahma realm, then you are truly liberated forever. So in this case, if the bhikshu, the monk, do whatever the Buddha has listed above, then he will surely be liberated. Yeah. And see, they never come back. Yeah. Once returners who go and do not come back. Okay. Then why does he say once returners? Ah, it could be that they have returned already into this world one time only. Yeah, already, they exist already as a human, as monk, but they will never come back again. If they go up to the higher level, they will never come back again. Truly liberated. Ah, okay, got that. How can thieves put on my robes and sell the thus come one, saying that all manner of karma one creates is just the Buddha Dharma? The Buddha means that these people, the one who are not worthy of monkhood, the one who doesn't keep the precept and just put on the robe, look like a Buddha or a monk, and cheating others, you know, selling the Buddhas even, meaning just repeat what he said, but don't do anything as the Buddha did, and just cheating people just to gain their fame and richness, comfort, life, or make people respect them, bow to them, just, just to gain their own benefit. So the Buddha warned the people about this kind of monk, just the same like Jesus has warned uh, his disciples and the gener- later generation that beware of the wolf in uh, lamb clothing, yes. After Jesus died, there may be a lot of wolf like that uh, proclaiming his teaching for their own benefit. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of true because even within religion, same religion, there used to be some wars and a lot of bloodshed. Remember, in the name of God, same God, same religion, not like different religion even, and still the same Many recently as well, yeah? Up to the recent years, still in the same name of the same religion, same God, fighting, bloodshed. Oh, what a sad thing. Hmm? So the Buddha continued to say that these so called monks, yeah, so called fake monks, will slander those who have left the home life and regard uh, big shoes who have taken complete precept 
as belonging to the path of the small vehicle. Because of such doubts and misjudgments, limitless living beings fall into the relentless hell. Not only these people, they sell the Buddha teaching for their own benefit, but they also misled other people to fall into the wrong concept, the wrong way of life, and or go to relentless hell. It is non-stop punishment, uh, relentless. Uh, no respite is what it is, right? No stop even for one second. In some hell, you have a, a tea break. <laughs> well, I told you that story. But this hell, <laughs> no respite, continuously. You cannot die, you cannot live, nobody helps you. Nobody hears your voice. You don't hear any of the saints' name in that kind of hell. You don't have even a nanosecond to even think of anything good, like saints or Buddha, Jesus, nothing in such a hell. In, in such a situation, it's make to you like that. Make you completely forget about everything, just suffer too much, you know, relentlessly, continuously, that you cannot even remember one nanosecond about the Buddha or anything. This is a terrible hell to fall into. And it goes on forever. That's why they say non-stop and relentless. I wouldn't wish anyone to fall into that kind of hell. Please keep the precept. At least you won't fall into hell. Even if you don't believe me, don't follow me, keep the five precepts for your own sake. Don't have to believe me. Just be a good person. Meditate if you can. If not, keep the five precepts. If you, anyone who keeps the five precepts and never kill anyone, never has harmful thought to anyone, at least he can be reborn again as human. Even if they eat meat, but because they don't know, ignorant. And they eat meat, but they have never killed themselves. Uh, they never killed the, the animal themselves. Then they still continue to be born as human until their merit run out before they even meet any master. If they meet the master, any enlightened master who has the power, to liberate them while they're still in human form, that's a lucky people. Because their merit is still have to attain to, to remain as a good human, healthy and sane intellect to understand what the master is talking about and follow a master. But if their their merit run out or they become handicapped or mentally uh un- incapable, then even they meet the master, useless. Understand? They don't understand what what is it all about? They have to understand what the Master is teaching in order to uphold it, to follow it. Then they can be liberated. So keep the five precepts. Always think good, do good, and help others if you can. Then you'll be surely reborn again as good human. Have a decent life or maybe a rich life. Depends on how much you give and how much heart you have what you're giving it, how pure you, you are when you're giving. Yeah. Then you'll be rich or medium, rich or poor accordingly. Okay? Yes. Uh, master also no, no exception, eh? Not because you are master and then you can just live recklessly and disregard it of the law or no helping people, no sympathy to people and no charitable heart, then also no good. <laughs> Actually, before you became a master, you must have been trained all that already. Otherwise, you couldn't be a master. What I meant is, even you have become a master already, but your karma in the past life, you have not paid, still have a little bit, then it will double, triple, hundred times more so that you suffer more than normal people. Okay, I say that bhikshus who, after my extinction, have decisive resolve to cultivate samadhi, and who, before the images of thirst come ones, I mean the Buddhas, can burn a candle 
on their body or burn off a finger, oh God, or burn even one incense stick on their bodies will in that moment repay their debt from beginningless time past. Okay. They can depart from the world and forever be free of our flaws. Our flow mean uh, fault. Though they may not have instantly understood the unsurpassed enlightenment, they will already have firmly set their mind on it. Now I want to explain to you something. Burn the candle or burn the incense on your body. And that was because Buddha is not there anymore, okay? And some people are so earnest, want liberation, so they do some kind of little sacrifice on themselves. Therefore, if you became a monk or nun in a Mahayana tradition, yeah, just like I did, they put some incense on your head, yeah, to burn it. I still have three holes here. <laughs> some burn even more, but three is the minimum. It's just because of that, because is it believed that if you do a little sacrifice like that, you will be free from sin. If you set your mind truly, firmly on the path of renunciation and to help yourself and sacrifice for others. This is a symbol of sacrifice and disregard your comfort for other beings in the future. Yeah? Because to be a monk, your ideal is to liberate others, to help others, to understand the holy teaching, not for yourself only. So anyway, uh, some burn more afterwards. But at the time of ceremony, for being a monk or nun, they give you three burning incense only. It burns until your skin burns off. It, the incense is small like that, okay? and then it keeps burning until it burns to your skin. Yeah. And it did hurt. And if you want to burn more, you do it at home. Because at the time of uh, uh, taking the precept, the foreign precept to be a monk and nun, there are too many people, so there's no time to burn more for you, but you can do that more at home. Of course, your head is all shaved already, so it's only the skin, the tender skin, and you burn where the most tender, right in front here. That is a symbol of self-forgetting, self-dedication, self-sacrifice, so that you remember that you must do everything you can to help others. Okay, right, all right. So that's why you're here. Okay, huh? I explained that to you now so you understand more. Huh? Yes. So if you want to become a monk or nun, for example, like that, no? in this uh, Mahayana tradition, you have to be vegetarian. Yeah, and you have to burn your body, your head somewhere. Head is easier for them because the head is shaved, shaved clean before that, and then they put incense, it burn, burn until. It burned your head, your skin. And then after the incense has burned to your skin and the incense has no more burning, it's only ash, then they will take the ash away and they give you some cool uh, watermelon to put on it. And they take care of you very tenderly, though. Very nice people. So that's a, the Buddha said that. The Buddha gave many, many methods to purify yourself because he knows after he left, they might not other they might not be able to to meet any other master. Even if you met a master, you will not understand it, you will not know. So if you continue to follow the Buddhism and if you do this and that, then the Buddha will also be connected and help you somewhat. So it doesn't matter which tradition you follow. The original master will also try to help you. It's just the problem, it's a human that reject it. Jesus, for example, Jesus always tried to help, invisibly, but humans they reject him. Or the Buddha reincarnate even, or Master, any they reject him. They're waiting for Maitreya, they're waiting for second coming, third coming, fourth coming, they're waiting forever. <laughs> That's why I don't want to make a Qinghaiism. Because if I registered our group as an ism, then we have more privilege more easy access, more easy. Doing anything is more easy because we are religion. 
Nobody can touch us. But we are just an association. Even then, people still think I'm trying to do something. Oh, I am trying to do something. <laughs> I'm trying to awaken you and other people, whoever I can. But it's very difficult for any master to come down. After any master come down, they make a coat out of it. They make an ism out of it. And then the other master come later on, or the same reincarnated master have problem, <laughs> you know, by his own teaching, <laughs> previous teaching. I told you before, uh, in my ashram before, Sihu or other place, I don't have any building. I use all my money for helping the, the poor, the worst, the less fortunate than us. Yeah? I told you because you still have a home to go, right? And homeless people, they don't have. The disaster people, they have nowhere to turn. To. Yeah? Even if you get wet here, tomorrow you go home, you have dry clothes. Okay? Even if you sit in a tent, so what? Huh? Even you have a tent. Disaster people, they don't have a tent. Homeless people, they don't have a tent. Therefore, I use money for other things. <laughs> I did not build any ashram at all. And then I told you, uh, don't worry, just wait until I die. You have a lot of churches, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Qinghai churches, possible. You see, after Bu- the Buddha, when he was alive, he would go begging for food. And now, beautiful temples everywhere. And if the Buddha reincarnated, he has to pay a ticket to go in, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or have to buy some incense or fruit to make offering or something. Or have to register as a Buddhist or something. Or the same with any religion. When I was in the Himalaya, <laughs> I normally sit outside and meditate on, on, in the, on the rock or somewhere outside, you know, outside in the forest or something. But some days it's too hard or too... too to call or something, I went inside one of the temples to sit. <laughs> and the monk kicked me out. <laughs> out? No, you cannot sit here. <laughs> yeah, I just sit and meditate only. And my legs were cramped or something, I couldn't get out fast enough, so I crawl out. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm going, going, going. <laughs> I mean, I'm crawling, crawling out. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Yeah, maybe I should have make an offering or something. I, I, I was almost penniless, okay, when I was in Himalaya. <laughs> 